I'm not sure about you guys, but I am old enough to remember the time when the DCCC told us that primary campaigns are bad. We shouldn't primary incumbent Democrats because, you know, they're just better politicians. They have more experience. And at a time when we are going up against a ruthless Republican Party, we want the people who are most capable of getting the job done. So primaries are bad, right? Not so much, because according to the Boston Globe, Nancy Pelosi has decided to endorse the primary challenger of an incumbent Democrat. She endorsed Joe Kennedy over Ed Marquis in the Senate challenge taking place in Massachusetts. So in other words, primary campaigns are good for me, but not thee. It's not okay if a progressive wants the primary a corporate Democrat, but if a corporate Democrat wants the primary uh, a progressive incumbent, that's okay. I can support it. So you're telling me that it is actually about ideology? Interesting. Who would have thought that that was the case? Now, of course, since this is a double standard, AOC, who actually rose to prominence by ousting an incumbent Democrat, tweeted about this, pointing out this double standard, saying, no one gets to complain about primary challenges again. So the DCCC, when can we expect you to reverse your blacklist policy against primary organizations? Because between this and lack of care around Ilhan Omar's challenger, it seems like less a policy and more a cherry-picking activity. She then added, Ilhan's multi-million dollar challenge was bankrolled by DC lobbyists and dark money groups. He blatantly admitted to using shell corporations to get around the DCCC blacklist, which all but means his vendors work with the Democratic Party, yet the DCCC has an enforced policy. I wonder why. Now, obviously, you know, her comment there is rhetorical. We know exactly why, you know, primary campaigns are okay if you're trying to get out a progressive. It's about ideology. More specifically, it's about corporate influence. If somebody is going to get in and take lots of money from large multinational corporations and in turn raise money for the party, of course, that's what they're going to want because the DCCC is the electoral arm of House Democrats. So if they see someone who could be a potential cash cow, that's who they're going to choose to support. It's not about ideology overall, even though, you know, conveniently, the ideology of corporate Democrats aligns with the aggregate party. Uh, this is about, you know, money and their corporate donors. That's what this is all about. Now, I am irritated because that DCCC story that AOC referenced there, I was really proud of Democrats at first for standing up to Sherry Bustos, who's the head of the DCCC, but they already backed away as early as January of this year. They collectively agreed to withhold dues from the DCCC triple C because of this policy and until this policy was overturned they were not going to pay the D triple C but a lot of them have already backtracked uh Ro Khanna, Mark Pocan Pramila Jayapal all reversed and they are now going to be giving their money to the D triple C uh in spite of what they previously said the only exception is AOC she's the only one as far as I know who's holding strong and says look you haven't reversed the policy so I'm not going to pay my dues to the D triple C now, the reason why progressives caved on this is because they didn't want it to seem like the Democratic Party was divided going into the 2020 election, except the Democratic Party is divided. Holding hands and singing Kumbaya isn't going to heal the wounds. It's not going to close the divide. There is a battle going on in the party for the heart and soul of the Democratic Party. And for you to cave after making a big stink about this, it makes you look like a clown. So, I mean, progressives in the Congressional Progressive Caucus, they were really adamant about not paying their dues to the DCCC so long as this policy was in place. But they caved. And what did they get for caving? Nothing, because this policy is still in place. So it's frustrating, and I really wish that the left would get more savvy and learn how to play politics, be a little bit more ruthless, right? But unfortunately, that's not the case. So I have to commend AOC here for standing strong. I just wish that, you know, she wouldn't have called Pelosi mama bear because that kind of admits that you have this sort of admiration for Nancy Pelosi when this is a corporate Democrat who doesn't deserve our respect or admiration because she hasn't earned it. She is an obstacle to progress. So we shouldn't look at her as some sort of leader because she is the Speaker of the House. I don't care who you are. If you are doing things to hurt people or not furthering policies that we need like medicare for all you are our enemy and i don't respect you but i mean kudos to her anyways for standing up now uh nancy pelosi was asked about this on cnn and her response was hilarious because she clearly had no idea how to respond 
uh, because when you're called out for being a hypocrite and you are a hypocrite and you don't have a good answer, you just beat around the bush and you uh, filibuster essentially. So this is what she said in response to the allegation that she's a hypocrite. Progressives are now accusing you of hypocrisy. They say the Democratic leadership has opposed primary challenges to House incumbents, uh, but now you're backing a primary challenge to a Senate incumbent. AOC tweeted, quote, no one gets to complain about primary challenges no. again. How do you respond to the charge? This well, is a double this, standard. But thank you for giving me the opportunity to clarify that, because that isn't the fact. People can support whoever they want, and our members do. But I support my members, and I have consistently, proudly supported my members in their re-elections, and that's been consistent against any other people who are running against them. They can run against them, and members can support them. But I support my members, and I, I am so proud of Joe Kennedy. Thank you for asking me about it. He really was instrumental in helping us win the House in 2018, which has made a significant difference in how we uh, point out the, uh, what the administration is doing. Uh, so he's been a valued member. He's, he's, a, he's brilliant, he's gentle, he's kind, he gives credit to other people. He has courage, he has courage, and I'm so proud to support him. So I thank you for asking me about that. So it isn't about, uh, members can support whoever they want. And I support my members when they run for re-election and they, when they run for other office. Nancy Pelosi is insufferable. I mean, she clearly was tap dancing around the issue because she didn't have a good answer. Shameful. She also said something that stood out to me. She said that Joe Kennedy helped Democrats win, win the, the House. House. How? Because you're saying that as one of the reasons why you're endorsing him over Ed Marquis. How did he help Democrats win the House? Be specific. What did he do? I mean, I'm assuming he raised a lot of money. So in her mind, that's what helps other Democrats. But like, what did he do? Did he campaign for Democrats? What did he do? He doesn't have much national name recognition. So what did he do specifically to help Democrats take back the House? She has nothing. That's why she's saying this. Now she says... People can support whoever they want. So if you are, you know, an incumbent Democrat and you want to endorse a primary opponent of one of your colleagues, I'm not going to stop you. Except the problem is that the official party disincentivizes that type of behavior. They don't just disincentivize uh, endorsements. They disincentivize primary challenges altogether. Because if you're working with a campaign that the DCCC blacklists, then it's going to be really difficult for you to get a job in politics if that's all you do, if you run campaigns or work on campaigns. I mean, if the electoral arm of House Democrats blacklists a firm that is working with a campaign, that is a serious thing. Like she's making it seem like, oh, well, you can just endorse a primary challenger if you want to, but it's not that simple. Like we're talking about institutional mechanisms that discourage this type of endorsement. So that's what we're pointing to here. But you're beating around the bush because you don't know how to respond to this claim of hypocrisy because you are a hypocrite. Now, I will defend her and then promptly rebut my defense of her uh, because she says, look, I, I support all of my members. So because Joe Kennedy, in theory, was a member of House Democrats, I'm supporting his endeavors, you know, into, into the Senate. Now, you can make the case that, sure, she is consistent here because she just endorsed Rashida Tlaib. She just endorsed Ilhan Omar. So, I mean, look, she supports even people who she doesn't like. Having said that, though, ask yourself this. Why did she take so long to endorse Rashida Tlaib or Ilhan Omar. Is that standard practice to like endorse the incumbent a few days before their primary election? I don't know. I mean, maybe she's right here. Maybe she does just endorse all incumbent Democrats because she even endorsed Dan Lipinski against Marie Newman back in 2018. Maybe she just automatically endorses all of the incumbents. Sure, maybe that's the case. But let's let's be real here. In the event polls showed that, you know, Ilhan Omar's primary challenger was poised to defeat her, do you think she'd make an endorsement? Maybe. At a minimum, I think she would at least sit out that race because she doesn't like Ilhan Omar because, again, this is about them raising money for House Democrats. This is about ideology and being able to fulfill the promises that you made to corporate donors. So, look, at the end of the day, um, I don't really care about what Nancy Pelosi says or does because I have no respect for her because I think she's a fraud and a clown. But 
if you're going to endorse the primary campaigns of insurgent candidates, then you have to at least stop disincentivizing these campaigns in the first place, right? If it's not okay for us, it shouldn't be okay for you. So tell the DCCC as Speaker of the House to undo this policy. But she won't do that. Because Nancy Pelosi is a, a self-interested politician who just wants people to get elected who's going to help her raise money for the party.